Hi everyone! In today's video, I'm going to be designing a history bounding wardrobe. If somehow you've made it to this video and you don't know what that is, history bounding is essentially adapting historical clothing styles to wear them in your day to day life. Today, I'll be focusing specifically on building a wardrobe that takes inspiration from more than one time period, with some tips and tricks for how to combine them and to choose which garments to include. I'll try to include styles that were considered both masculine and feminine throughout history, but since this video is based on my own experience and taste, and personally I prefer skirts and dresses, that is the main focus. I should also mention that the historical styles I'll be focusing on are European, again that's just because that's what I'm familiar with. But I'm hoping that by giving you tips on how to combine things, you'll be able to apply some of the ideas here, even if the specific outfits I show aren't your style. Please do keep in mind that history bounding is a made up thing, and therefore there are no rules. I'm just here to try to give you ideas, I'm not trying to tell you that you're doing it wrong. So let's get started. I'm approaching this subject a little bit like a capsule wardrobe, in the sense that I want to be able to combine my garments into as many outfits as possible without needing to have a huge wardrobe. So the way I've chosen to do that is to look at historical styles and see how I can split them into individual garments and then join them back together again to make different outfits. To make this a little easier to visualize, I've sketched out the different garments that I'll be talking about, and I'll be showing them on screen. And to make it a little bit more interactive, I've also turned them into a printout. So if you'd like a copy of these to colour and follow along, there will be a link to that down in the description. I do want to give a very special thanks to Cozy Doe Studio, who designed the figure templates that I drew my outfits on top of. Basically, these are drawings of bodies that you can use to make it a little bit easier to draw clothes. This is a really cool project because it's actually the first time that I've seen such a big range of sizes and shapes in a set like this, and the whole thing is just beautifully put together. For full transparency, I did buy the set of medium templates with my own money, and I liked them so much that I reached out and asked whether it would be okay if I used them in this video. So I would really recommend checking out the Cozy Doe Studio shop. They have these templates and they also have some really cool sewing patterns. Before I start showing you the garments I chose, I wanted to take a moment to mention waistline. The fashionable waistline varies throughout history and sometimes it's a little more obvious than others. The 1820s and 1920s are probably an example that comes to mind, but sometimes it's a little less obvious, like the waistline that slowly moves down between the Regency and Victorian period, or the 18th century waistline that sits just below the natural waist. If you're sewing all your own clothes, or you're buying pieces that are inspired by historical ones, you probably won't run into many problems. But if you're using a reenactment wardrobe, or you're commissioning historically accurate pieces, it might be something to keep in mind. I don't want to oversimplify this into only combine garments with the same waistline, because there are some really cool ways to mix and match waistlines, like wearing pieces with a higher waistline as cropped tops or jackets. It's just something to be aware of during your planning process. For the wardrobe I designed for this video, I did decide to stick just with the natural waistline just to make things a little bit easier to mix and match, and keep it simple. So when it comes to thinking about historical styles in terms of individual garments, there are probably a few that come to mind that are, well, already individual garments. Things like petticoats, shirtwaists, jackets. A lot of things that historically fall into menswear categories are individual garments too breeches, shirts, waistcoats. But if a dress has a waist seam, you can split that into two garments too. And this isn't a new concept. For example, if you look at Victorian dresses, 
There was a trend to have a dress that has both a day bodice and an evening bodice. At a moment in history when skirts used up a lot of fabric, this was, of course, very convenient. You could have two totally different looks while only needing one giant skirt. And if we implemented this with our wardrobes today, we'd be able to get even more than two times as much use out of the outfit. If you were to sew a Victorian-inspired dress with both a day bodice and an evening bodice, you could wear the skirt with the day bodice and the skirt with the evening bodice, but you could also wear the skirt with a shirtwaist or a bodice from a different time period. You could wear the day bodice as a jacket with a dress from a different period, or with a different skirt, or a pair of breeches, or even a modern pair of jeans. And most of those combinations work for the evening bodice too. So now that you have a general idea of the concept, I'm going to take a very brief look through history and show you all the garments in the wardrobe that I designed. Going in chronological order, I'm going to start in the late 14th century with a kirtle. At this point in history, kirtles are fitted, don't have a waist seam, and have spiral lacing. I'll be keeping all those features, but shortening the hem. I'll actually be shortening most of the skirts in this video to a mid-calf length. That's both personal preference and to make it easier to layer. I'm also including a period shirt. Shirts made with basic rectangular construction were worn for a huge part of history, so this could really fit in with a few of the time periods that I'm including. This could be worn tucked in or loose, so I'm including two versions of it. Lastly, I'm including a pair of long fitted hose. By this, I mean trousers rather than socks. Historically, they would have had feet attached, but I'm leaving these off to make them a little more wearable with a modern wardrobe. Essentially, I'll be treating these like a pair of trousers or leggings when I'm combining them with other garments. Next up, we're going to include some 16th century or Tudor garments. Again, I'm starting with a kirtle, though by this point it has a waist seam and the bodice shape is slightly more conical. That does mean that the bodice is a little more structured, so keep that in mind if you're planning on combining it with other bodices. For example, you'd have a hard time layering a fitted Victorian bodice over top of it since they have a different silhouette. To go with my kirtle, I'm also drawing a pair of tie-on sleeves. These maybe aren't the most versatile thing in this wardrobe, since they only go with this kirtle, but I couldn't resist including them since they're such a nice historical addition to an outfit. Lastly, I'm rounding out the 16th century section of my wardrobe with a doublet. I have a really simple doublet that I wear as a jacket in real life, so I knew I had to include one here too. I'm drawing it unbuttoned to make it a little easier to show my layering later on, but this could be worn open or closed. Moving into the 18th century, I'm starting with a Polonaise inspired dress. You might recognize this design from one I've already made on my channel, so if you'd like to see one of these being sewn, I'll add a link to that video. The idea behind this dress is that it can either be worn buttoned up the front or bustled up in the back, so I've included two drawings of it. The fact that it can be worn over other skirts is also a big part of the reason I drew so many of my skirts this length. Next up, I'm drawing a simple 18th century petticoat. 
This is just two rectangles gathered into a waistband and it ties on. Since this is such a simple skirt, it'll be great for layering with other pieces in this wardrobe. I'm also including a dress based on the chemise a la reine or robe a la creole style. This has gathering along the neckline, underbust, and waist. So it's super adjustable, just like the petticoat. Though this style would have originally been worn over stays, I think it makes a great unstructured dress too. Lastly, I also wanted to include another trouser option. And I think these breeches are a great choice for history bounding. They're a little more subtle than, say, trunk hose, but the full front still sets them apart from modern trousers. For the Victorian era, I'm starting with the dress I mentioned earlier, which has both a day bodice and an evening bodice. Most of the skirts I've included have been pretty simple, so I took the opportunity to add a little more embellishment to this one. There is also a bit of embellishment on the bodices, but generally I've toned it down a little compared to the originals I'm taking inspiration from. But again, just because I prefer them a little more simple, doesn't mean there's anything wrong with covering them in trims, if that's what you prefer. I'm also going to include a corset. This could be worn as underwear, like it would have been worn historically, to give structure to the Victorian bodices. But it could also be worn as outerwear, since we're not aiming for historical accuracy here. And lastly, I'm going to include some garments from the turn of the century. For clarity, I'm calling this section Edwardian, but really, some of these styles could be considered late Victorian too. I'm starting off with a shirtwaist that has a lace accent around the yoke, and some gathering at the waist. I'm also including a walking skirt, which looks nice and sleek in this drawing, but does have some fullness in the back in the form of pleats or gathers. I actually just released a tutorial for a walking skirt, so if you want to see an easy way to put one of these together, I'll link that video above. Next, I'm drawing a waistcoat. I didn't include a whole lot of outerwear pieces in this wardrobe, just because there are already so many garments and therefore so many outfit combinations to talk about, but a waistcoat was just too good of a layering piece to pass up. And lastly, a pair of combinations. Like with the corset, combinations were, of course, underwear, but since we're doing history bounding here, there's nothing stopping us from wearing them as outerwear. Though, you might want to close the crotch seam if you're planning on wearing them on their own. For this wardrobe, I chose to go with a white, lacy, frilly pair. So, without further ado, let me show you some of my favourite combinations to mix time periods together.
and that's basically it. I hope that you enjoyed it and that I was able to give you some ideas for your own wardrobe. Do remember that you can print out a copy of the garments that I drew if you want to keep playing around with different combinations. And thank you again to Cozy Doe Studio for the beautiful figure templates without which my drawings wouldn't exist. I'll put a link in the description to the template I used in case you want to draw any extra garments that fit into the set or create a whole new wardrobe design for yourself. And finally, I wanted to mention that I made this video as part of Cozy, or the Coztube Symposium, which is essentially a group of Coztubers getting together to create a bunch of content for you. So if you'd like to see the full list of all the videos made for this event or any more information, there will be links to all of that below. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!